Um, can we have our seats? God bless you. Um, I want to say thank you to his an elder brother. Don't just don't mind him. He say hey, brother, brother. He's an elder brother to me. Yes, Pastor Okbe, thank you for the privilege to share fellowship with you and God's people. Um, as soon as I entered this place, the first thing I got was, I just, I knelt down to pray. And I, I just received a song. And I didn't know that what we'll be dealing with today was the fundamentals of priesthood. I didn't know. Um, Genesis chapter, don't worry, I'm not preaching. <laughs> Genesis chapter 28. I just want to draw our attention to uh, the potency of the altars of one of our patriarch in the person of Abraham. So let me, let me, maybe I should teach us that song. Let's just um, marinate with it as we continue. So that even in the course of this meeting, for those of us whose altars are broken and probably lack potency, God will do something tangible to us and our altars will be revived and not just be revived but have the capacity to take sacrifices in the name of Jesus. So the song is simple. It says, This is my offering. This is my sacrifice. My life is yours. And this is what I bring. This is my offering. This is my sacrifice. My life is yours, and this is what I bring. This is my offering. This is my sacrifice. My life is yours, and this is what I bring. This is my offering. This is my sacrifice. My life is yours, and this is what I bring. Can you sing it now? This is my offering. This is my sacrifice. My life is yours, and this is what I bring. This is my offering. This is my offering. This is my sacrifice, my life is yours, and this is what I bring. Two more time, this is my offering. This is my offering, this is my sacrifice, my life is yours, and this is what I this is my offering. This is my offering. This is my sacrifice. My life is yours. And this is what I bring. This is my offering. This is my offering. This this is what I pray. This is my offering. This is my offering. This is my sacrifice. And this is what I pray. For the last time, this is my offering. This is my offering. 
Jesus. This is my song. is a story that we all are conversant with. dedicated to a, ne to a negative altar if you can sing this song over and over again you will be rededicated to Jesus you will be taken from that altar and be given to another you will be given Jesus will take hold of your life he will take hold of your life this is my offering this is my sacrifice yes my life is yours and this is what I bring this is my offering this is my this is, this is my sacrifice. My life, my life is yours. And this is what I This is my offering. This is my Remonata la mosica prianta vetos kitali. This is my Apriya fato mina de gaskinte, reba boko sika pranto vele supre de veli atamande. Oh, shana bada la badi de vele teme nete mina talias. Ebe na bete ne bete ni na ba kama tele mananti. Apre te be banto skebe ne vele. O franta tene tatale, mani ne tonani si te me ne te mi ne me ne talias. Pariana na manatona na bela te bela tamakaskia so be bele bele Aprianta basket fanta le bela bela Evre tababo Evre tababo Evre tababo Si ene bena tabala fina natalia tame So be bele bele Si ene bena tamina na ile deriana this is what I bring. This is my offering. This is my offering. This is what I bring. Holy Spirit, you are well. Fill these temples with your presence. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. <laughs> Fill these temples with your 
your presence. <laughs> Holy Spirit, you have access. <laughs> Whoa. Fill these temples with your presence. We wait on you. Lord, we wait on you. We
my eyes above the way when no surprise my soul will rest in your embrace I am yours you are mine can we be seated it's, it's a story that we are conversant with and I will just read from verse 12 Genesis 28 from verse 12 and he dreamed and behold a ladder set up on the earth and the top of it reached to heaven and behold an angel and behold the angels of God ascending and descending on it and behold the Lord stood above it and said I am the Lord the God of Abraham thy father and the God of Isaac the land whereon thou lies to thee will I give it and to thy seed and thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth and thou shalt spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south and in thee in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed and behold I am with thee and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest and will bring thee again into this land for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee and Jacob awakened out of his sleep and said surely the Lord is in this place and I knew it not and he was afraid and said how dreadful is this place this is not order but the house of God and this is the gate of heaven I will take that place again Yilafana Tabiga and Jacob verse 17 and he was afraid and said how dreadful is this place this is no other but the house of God and this is the gate of heaven uh, this is a story that we are all aware of how Jacob in all of his journeys uh, meandered into a place where his ancestor and the person of Abraham built an altar yes 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 as a matter of fact Jacob is the grandson of Abraham right um, I want to believe that um, the day that Jacob came to that place the, alt the altar was was not arranged so it was one of the stones the altar is already scattered right it was one of the stones that Jacob just picked and then he used as a pillow and he slept carelessly slept I mean I am tired I need to rest today before I continue my journey tomorrow morning right and the young man slept and had a dream and in the dream he saw that uh, there, there, there is a ladder and angels were ascending and descending my focus is not Jacob that's not my focus my focus is What, what kind of what kind of altar did Abraham build that was able to trap a spirit such as God not in a man but in a location do you understand Abraham was not he, 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 he is dead and gone he was no longer there to be servicing the altar but there was something he did that was an eternal service. Do, do, do we? Do we understand me? There was something he did that was capable of speaking in spite of his, his absence. God did not say, okay, this altar is now old. It's been long that anybody came to to do to pay obeisance or to do sacrifice here. It's now old. Let me look for where somebody is doing sacrifice 
so that I can now tabernacle there the way just as I have tabernacle there. But you see, Abraham is long gone. But what he did ba, was so strong <laughs> that though Abraham was dead and gone, what he did was always fresh to keep heaven's attention at that spot. He is dead and gone. My pain is that the guy is dead and gone. <laughs> what kind of altar did that guy build? That he was not, not you know those of us who have watched Nigerian film, you know that Habalis will wake up in the morning with gong, ging, 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 and then the pain will be sensed every morning. Right? Abraham, I'm just trying to give an example. Abraham was not I don't know how long, but for his third generation to come and meet that thing, it means that guy must be long dead. Long dead. But his altar was still potent to trap a spirit such as God. Jacob now said, see, this place, this place, no other place, so not that other side. But you see this place I'm staying, this place is supposed to be feared. He said, because this place is no, no other than the house of God and the gate of heaven. You see, somebody will think that Jacob slept outside. Yes. Physically looking, you will think, ah, this man is in the cold. He slept outside because it was just a place where he just, the only thing we were told in scriptures was that he took a stone. But you see, when, when the man slept and his eyes was open. He discovered he was not in an open air. He, he, he discovered that he was not in an open air. He was sleeping in a house. And that house was not the house for human beings. It's the house of a deity. He discovered that where he discovered that this place where he, where, where he just slept ba, it's not it's not place where flesh and blood sleeps. You see, eh, 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 we are, I, we, we are, this place is, is dreadful. It's dreadful. He said, This place is the house of the Lord. He went forward and said, It is the gate. It was somebody's altar. Somebody's altar that developed to become the house of the Lord and became the gate of heaven. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you that that spot became a gate where eternity can freely walk into it because somebody built something, built something that was potent, potent, and a man slept there. <laughs> the reason why I'm taking us through this route is Abraham is long dead and gone. His altar was still potent to trap Jesus, to trap God. Hmm? So much so that somebody slept years after he's dead and gone and saw that God has not changed position because Abraham was dead. God didn't change location because Abraham was dead. God was still at the top of the ladder and God began to speak to him from that because of the potency of that altar. My question to us is what is the potency of your altar? You are still alive. You are, you are, you are alive. You are, you are alive. Oh. You are alive. You are alive. You are alive. People come to stay with you and nothing. Their prayer life dies. You, you are still alive. You are not even old. You are, you are alive. But a man did had something with God that years after, years after, third generation, time didn't wear it out. Time. Time didn't wear it out. His, <laughs> his third generation meand, just careless, carelessly entered. And they didn't say because he carelessly entered, he is not, he is not legible. Our father will say, ignorance in the realm of the spirit is not an excuse. The guy ignorant, ignorantly ent, entered a place where spirits do transaction. 
he ignorantly entered and ignorantly contacted is your altar that potent you are not dead you are not dead one of one of the things i would like to use as typical example for us there are you know there are some of us who uh, you just grew up and discovered that something was working against you in your family it was a covenant the, it was a covenant somebody entered with a a bastard deity right you were not there to say no i know they do you didn't agree to it do you understand me you didn't agree to that to that covenant you you just came and discovered that something you didn't agree to is not working your i'm trying to tell you that if those people know the protocol to keep such covenant you you are still alive <laughs> You are, still alive. you are still alive. Your own altar have not even finished covering you. <laughs> I'm trying to say that we have protocol. We have protocol. We have, we have, we have a model to getting this thing right. Can you just, I, I brought that matter so that you will check your life and ask yourself, how potent is my altar? Self? Can my altar take any sacrifice? Can my, can my altar hold a man and say, this is my sister. You cannot go anywhere unless you serve Jesus. That, that is one of the kind of altars that Abraham had. Abraham. The scripture says, while Abraham was being tied to Melchizedek, Levi was, was, was in his loins. Benjamin, all his seeds, they didn't know that he was subscribing them to the lineage, to the lineage or the God that, <laughs> to the priesthood of, of Melchizedek. So much so that they cannot, they cannot wonder and serve another God because an altar, they've been dedicated to an altar and this is a product of priesthood. How potent is your priesthood? How potent is your priesthood? Like I said, I'm not here to preach another message. I just came so that you will genuinely, you will genuinely tread on the path of priesthood. Yes. Priesthood. Our father apostle will say in any, any family where you find anything happening like it's, maybe people are running mad anyhow. He said don't, don't be quick to go and be binding the, 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 the evil spirit. He said look check well there is a man that is diligent in his priesthood that gives room for that spirit to find access in that family. <laughs> and <laughs> take it or leave it. Many of us have people like that in our lineage who are diligent priests to Satan. They are diligent. Some of them have dedicated their life not to eat some specific specific food for the rest of their life. That's the that's the price of their priesthood. You you say no, my own priesthood in the <laughs> in liberty. Continue. When you find any believer whose life is not under 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 co co covenant, forget it. Any believer who's his, I, I can do anything I like. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. It, you can go anywhere. You can say anything. Such life is not under covenant. People that are under covenant, there is restriction. And in priesthood, Oga, there is restrictions. There are things you cannot do. There are things you cannot say. There are places you cannot go. Everybody may be able to go. But you see, your priesthood does not permit it. Have you not seen, have you not seen some people, the, the charm they did does not permit them to wear shoe. Yes. You, you are ashamed. You say, no, I cannot go and not wear shoe. That man knows what not wearing shoe does for him. He doesn't care how, you, how much you think. He's, he's, he's glad to oblige to his priesthood. Can we, in a moment of time, ask the Lord for grace? Grace. Grace. Grace to practice priesthood. Make me a vessel. Make me an offering. Make me whatever you want me to be. 
I came here with nothing but all you have given me Jesus bring new wine out of me make me your vessel make me your vessel make me an offering make me whatever you want me to be. I came here with nothing I came here with but all you have given me but all you Jesus bring new wine Jesus bring new wine make me a vessel make me make me an offering make me make me whatever But all you have given me, Jesus, bring you wine. Oh, out of me, Jesus, bring you wine. Jesus, bring you wine. You call me out upon.
sacrifice. The life that I live is not my own. I've been offered to a deity, and now I am a sacrifice. The life that I live is not my own. I've been offered unto Jesus Christ, and now I am a sacrifice. The life that I live is not my own. Spirit consume, consume, consume me more and more. I say consume more, consume a very atagas, a very nakapani atene, a very kabobo ibebes, a very ruke kebenidias, a very 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 as. Aye aye aye.
Yeah. 